Yo, Optimus, remember me? It's Bumblebee, it's your boy. Leave me alone. We can brand cats. Yeah, <laughs> so, we can do that. <laughs> there has been, let's say, eight to nine hundred Transformers movies uh, so far, cartoons, games, all sorts of things, and they've all been terribly exciting. But give me the, give me the sort of elevator pitch for, for Earthspot, what's new? We have the Malto family, who is moving to Witwicky. The Malto kids then meet Earth-born Transformers known as Terrans, and they have something that makes them related to them, that bonds them together, and they then have to become family. The Terrans are adopted into the family, and they have to work together to defeat some very cool evils. It's after the war also. This one takes place after the big war. That Whenever you've seen all of these other incarnations of Transformers, there's the war that's going on between the Autobots and the Decepticons, and they're going to their planet, they're trying to bring their planet back to the Earth, there's all the things, and now the planet's gone, they are stranded on Earth, and they're needing to make it work from this point on. It's finding that, that peace between Decepticons and Autobots. It's a franchise that has a lot of different entry points for all of us, including, you know, our, uh, you know, each of us have kind of come to Transformers in a different way, and I think a lot of people are going to relate to that and be like, oh, this is when I came in. I came with G1 legacy characters, or I came in with uh, the Michael Bay films, or um, so that's fun to be able to have all these different worlds, and then ours is really a fresh start. It's a it's like a family story. I think there's nice, there's aspects of obviously the Autobots and making crunchy noises and, you know, <laughs> shifting modes and getting into battles. But there's also, that's the sound. Alan, you've been Superman. You have, you have given your voice to some big characters and finally you've given it to Optimus Prime. Was that on the bucket list of voice characters to do? No, uh, I, I, just, I didn't imagine it. I couldn't imagine it. Um, and even Superman, when I played Superman, it was a Superman, they're like, this is the young Superman who doesn't quite know what he's doing. <laughs> so it was like, there was Superman always a, you yeah. know, like a caveat of like, yeah, yeah it's your, the Joker, but he lives in Glendale. And he has a, you know, a, a woman who has two growing children that he's sort of adopting. Um, and so there's always a little bit of a different story to it. I want to see those stories. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by those stories. See that. <laughs> this is, you know, this is this is him after the war, but it but it is Optimus Prime, and it's just a new. Uh, this, we're telling this new story, and uh, so they're they're bringing in new voices. So it's it's getting to say Autobots roll out is a very is very big. It feels. It, it it gave me chills the first time I did it. Like silly, like I didn't re I didn't expect that, and uh, I don't know, I'm having a good time. And it, and got, being able to go into like a toy store and and pick out things like Optimus mm. Prime, and be like that's me over there. Yeah, that's, yeah. Nice. that's me as well. I got droid from Star Wars. That's that's me. That sets you up for Christmases for like. Decades oh yeah, now. you're good. Yeah, I can't. I haven't even gotten there yet, man. Honestly, I haven't gotten there. I I've been, I've been trying to buy a cap with Optimus. You'd think that'd be easy, but I I keep ordering the wrong ones. Um, <laughs> I thought you said cat. I was like, no. What? <laughs> Wait, they make caps? A, ca a cap, a hat, a hat okay. <laughs> that has Optimus on it, and. Uh, I haven't even thought. I definitely don't think that has me on it. It's like I want one with Optimus, on it, but then I. So I'm still putting that together. I hope there's someone from Hasbro who's like making notes of this, going, "We can brand cats." Yeah. <laughs> so, we can do that. <laughs> Danny, there is, yes. there is, there's an added pressure on your shoulders uh, for this show because I would say Bumblebee is probably the most well, critically well received outing that Transformers have had, apart from maybe the really upsetting movie from the 80s. Uh, so this is a character with a lot of weight on it, and I thought DuckTales was gonna be uh, a big enough kind of albatross across the, sh across the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You go into this with just enthusiasm and excitement, or a little bit of pressure on there as well? I think I go in with both feelings, heavy on my shoulders. On one side is excitement, enthusiasm, vivid childhood memories, and being able to bring this iconic character to life. Uh, having toys and all these flashbacks of throwing them at my brother, my brother throwing Optimus back at me. And on the other side is I have to bring this character to life that is so vivid and so iconic and so many voices have come before me that have, have brought Bumblebee to life that have made me love Bumblebee. So a little bit of that pressure is there, but at the same time, I think for this version, the nice thing is 
I was prepared with a, with a voice. I came in with a direction, I saw the image, and I was like, okay, we're gonna come in, he's gonna be slightly robotic, and, and then they're like, Danny, drop all that. No affectations, just be yourself. And I was like, so I just get to be sort of my neurotic self, being like, Optimus, text me back, man, what's up? And uh, they were like, yeah, that's kind of what we want. And so I get to just be myself, which, relieved me of that pressure. So that, that feels very nice and fresh moving forward. And um, and it's exciting to be able to kind of be between these worlds because now I'm a mentor to a family. And at the same time, I'm trying to be like, yo, Optimus, remember me? It's Bumblebee, it's your boy. Leave me alone. Yeah. That's pretty much our relationship. Yeah.